Welcome back guys. So another week and another episode of The Gifted and I do think this one was really worthy of the review and the hunt for easter eggs. I do believe it was really rich on those. Now between me and Hillbilly Author on Discord I think we did get all of those easter eggs kind of pinned down here. But however though and as per the usual by the time you're done watching this video if you do think I missed an easter egg here or an easter egg there make sure you drop me a comment and let me know which one was that. But in the spirit of not wasting any more time and without further ado let's get started and let's go. So number one mystery solved and we now know who is Madeline Risman. And it all came with a little bit of an easter egg or shall I call it a name drop. Now when the Madeline Risman name first got mentioned on the season 1 finale what we thought was she's either Deborah Risman or Matthew Risman or has something to do with one of them. But as time went by and more episodes aired we started thinking okay she might be either a mashup of both or she could be Deborah Risman but in a variation away from the comics making her somehow related to Matthew Risman. And that is exactly what we got on this week's episode. Madeline Risman is pretty reminiscent of Deborah Risman in the comics, the woman who played around with the X gene and with genetics and was responsible for creating the X-23 Wolverine clone. But as mentioned by Noah close to the end of the episode, she's not just a Deborah Risman out of the comics, but rather as well a sister to Matthew Risman, the man responsible for founding the purifiers. But number two, the suppression of the X gene as the solution. That's what Madeline Risman might actually be going for. Now here is what I'm really thinking about Madeline Risman. So pretty much we got the reveal that she's going for a suppression of the X gene through a tongue slip by Noah. So the question that's automatically posed in this situation is why did she not reveal this to the Struckers on her own? I mean she's treating them like they're family, she does make it sound like they are as well, so why not just tell them? Now I'm not really saying that she has to be evil on the series, that all of this has to mean anything. But the situation, her actions, the fact that she did not put it out there up front, it all does make her a little bit shady, maybe a lot shady. But while we're still on the Madeline Risman topic, number 3. We've got our second nod or easter egg in Madeline Risman's lab, the very first mutant that we get to see over there, the one who absorbs energy and releases it from her body. Now while in this case it is made clear she can't control her abilities yet, the girl just hit me as reminiscent of Bishop from the comics. Now we could say as well that she is reminiscent of Urg and we've already met Urg on the series, but however when you think about it, when it comes to the absorption of energy all three of them do absorb it through their entire bodies. But when it comes to release, Urg releases it through his right eye while the other two release it through their entire bodies. Number 4, the second mutant we get to see in the lab, Shauna. Now her abilities when it comes to plants kind of remind me of a lot of characters in Marvel Comics, but only two out of that lot kind of stand out and hit me as close matches. The first one is Kali Breda, also known as Dryad in the comics, and the second one is Nature Girl. But moving on to number 5, another background story, another one that makes you sympathetic with someone who's more of an anti-hero than an actual hero at this moment, that being Lorna Dane in this case. But however, regardless of her part on that background story and in the entirety of the present day events on this episode, if there is anyone we are more sympathetic with after watching, it's Marcos. I mean we've already been very sympathetic with the guy, but right now we're even more sympathetic with him. The whole 9 yards really. There's the excitement about Lorna's pregnancy, the wanting to have a baby girl, the having the baby girl but never really knowing her, the holding that very same baby girl only to say goodbye to someone who in his own words he doesn't really know. All of that was really heartbreaking. Number 6, the school in Switzerland for mutant children. Now that one is pretty reminiscent of one of two things. The first one is Xavier's Institute for Gifted Youngsters, but the NSLI is the one that hits me as more suitable in this context. Now the NSLI stands for the New Mutants Leadership Institute and not surprisingly Esme Frost and her sisters happen to be members. Number 7, I heard of you, they say your dad is that mutant from the news. Seems like another confirmation that in the world of the gifted, Magneto is indeed Lorna's father. Now it is not just that Magneto is newsworthy, but Magneto does have a way of getting himself on the small screen a lot, both in the comics and in the movies. But number 8, for the very first time we get to meet a family member of Lorna's on the series and that family member happens to be her aunt. So this woman that we met over here happens to be credited on IMDB as Aunt Dane and that really tells us nothing. Instead though, it does open room for speculation and the first name that does come to mind in this case happens to be Ruth Eisenhart out of the comics. Now Ruth Eisenhart happens to be sister to Max Eisenhart whom we also know as Magneto. So while the series has been avoiding to tie Lorna to Magneto by name, it does seem like it's giving us little hints and easter eggs and nods towards the origin of Lorna. 
Number 9. That puck-like thing that Lorna got as a gift for her birthday from her father. Not only does it seem like an easter egg to Magneto, but it also does represent the biggest piece of evidence so far that on the gifted, Magneto happens to be Lorna's father. The shape that does seem like a logo carved on that puck, it's pretty reminiscent of what we do see on Magneto's helmet in the comics. It might as well have been all cut right out of that helmet. But number 10. A few episodes ago we did speculate that Dawn is actually Aurora out of the comics. But anyway, and after watching this episode, it does seem almost pretty obvious that they are actually setting her up to become Aurora. That Aurora Borealis-like situation when Marco, Stone and Lorna were touching, that felt like a subtle hint towards the idea that she would grow into becoming Aurora from the comics. Number 11 though, there was a decent amount of talk on this episode about the Fenris twins. We even see their scene from season 1 in the recap at the very beginning of the episode. But besides all the talk and the recap, we also get the music box from Andre Von Strucker. So with the connection between the two Strucker siblings on the series, you know, the shared dreams and all of that, there is a good chance that the series is trying to tell us, okay guys, these are your version of the Fenris twins on The Gifted. Last but not least though is number 12. We got to see Polaris in her costume on the series. Now this is not exactly the Polaris comic book costume, but I did think it was really good. Now think about it this way, usually these things are a work in progress, you don't create a costume right off the bat, so it should take time for her to get to that one final costume, the one out of the comics. So yes, it does make sense that this is not an exact replica right out of the comics. It does make sense as well that we will start with something simpler and then work our way towards what we want to see in the end. Something that by then would be picked right out of the comic book pages. No additions, no deductions, just comic book Lorna Dane. That being said though, my work here is done. I hope you enjoyed the episode, so let me know in the comments if you did like this episode and let me know if I did miss any easter eggs. Let me know as well if you did like this video by dropping it a much appreciated like. And of course, if that were to be the case, make sure you subscribe and enable notifications for my future videos, community posts and live streams. But until the next time you tune in for another one of my videos, thank you so much for tuning in to this one and have a great day.